Hey everybody, welcome to Northwest Ecuador. I am in a heart of palm plantation here in the cloud forest. This is one of the monocultures that is going on right now here in Northwest Ecuador that is uh, a major threat to biodiversity in the area. So let's talk a little bit first about what is heart of palm and how we could actually make this plantation a much more diverse and also a much better resource for people as well as the ecosystem. Okay, so we are standing in this palmito plantation, heart of palm plantation that is pretty much hard as palm as far as the eye can see. This lovely green mountaintop over here that looks as though it's forested is actually just simply covered in these small palm trees. Uh, you can see that they just go on for rows and rows and rows. It's sort of like being in a a tropical labyrinth of sorts of dwarf palm trees just walking here through this tunnel of small palm trees. Now, here's the thing. These trees are grown uh, and harvested at about a year and a half. They are harvested very young because inside the central stalk here, that's very thorny, you might notice. So it's very dangerous work to be in here harvesting these. Inside the central stalk is a soft white stem, AKA the heart of palm. You might have bought these marinated in a can or soaked in oil in a little Italian market and put them on your salad and they are quite delicious. However, it's really just, um, it's not like really a staple food. You know, no one's gonna live on heart of palm, right? And it might surprise you that thousands of hectares of this area are devoted simply to growing heart of palm. But the fact is, is that these trees only grow in a very narrow belt on the equator and they where they can get enough rain 2000 to 5000 millimeters per year they need a lot of rain they need a constantly humid climate and they need to be close to the equator so you need a very specialized environment to grow these trees so you've got a very small part of the world supplying the heart of palm dem demands of uh the global north of the developed world Nobody eats heart of palm here in Ecuador. It's probably like a ceviche of it with lemon juice, but it's, it's not like it's a common food. So anyway, what we're missing out on is that if these trees are allowed to grow tall and mature and they grow up to an over a meter to a meter and a half per year, they produce a wonderful fruit called the peach palm fruits or the chantaduro fruits in Costa Rica and in uh, Peru, it's called the pahiabi. It is one of the most nutrient rich tropical fruits. It's one of the most nutrient rich foods on the planet. It's got protein, it's got fiber, it's loaded in beta carotene, it's got omega threes, it's got protein. And if these trees were spaced out, here they're only about a meter and a half apart. If they were spaced out to eight to 10 meters apart and you were growing other trees in the canopy of what could be these beautiful tall palm trees, you could still be producing eight tons of chantaduro or pahiabi per year in a one hectare. Just to give you a comparison on that, uh, we average worldwide harvests are about 4.25 metric tons per hectare per year. Rice is about four, corn is about 5.5. So you can grow an average of eight and that's in a mixed system. That's if you are all actually growing other things. So our idea for these palmito plantations is to acquire parts of them as much as we can, take down a lot of the trees, but not all of them. And every eight to 10 meters, leave one standing that can grow tall to become a producer of this amazing nutrient rich food. One of the great things about growing the peach palm as a crop is that the trees produce tons of biomass, lots of leaves, yeah? You can take these leaves down and put them on the soil. And one of the great things, say, if you were going to regenerate a monoculture of heart of palm, as opposed to starting with a pasture like we did, we started with a very degraded pasture, is that the soil you've got underneath this all this biomass that ends up down here is not that bad okay it's actually pretty black and you can tell i'm just digging in here with my machete very loose and if you're trying to um 
uh, uh, upgrade a pasture, a degraded pasture, <laughs> into an agroforestry system. It's very hard because the soil is very compacted and it's very tough. So if you wanted to bring diversity to this system and you wanted to see it come back to being more of a natural forest, but a forest that is useful and productive to people as well as hospitable to wildlife and as well as a self-sustaining ecosystem, it's a really good idea to start with really with much better soil, allow every eight to 10 meters, one of these baby palm trees to grow to its full height, produce fruits, and in the spaces grow other cultivars such as cacao or coffee or wanabana or mangosteen or cardamom, turmeric, ginger, ayahuasca, Whatever it is that you would like to grow that could also bring you a good return. Because let me tell you something, people. Agroforestry needs to get real. It can't just be about planting trees for the sake of trees because we love trees. Agroforestry is a scalable, realistic system for food production. And we need to be able to show the people who believe that cereal crops feed the world that agroforestry systems can also feed the world and bring economic returns to the people who are farming them. Okay, so here I've got some beautiful chantadoro fruit cooked up, the fruit of the peach palm tree, a very underutilized and underrated uh, food crop capable of producing 20 tons per hectare per year, comparing that to wheat or rice that produce around four tons. We're sitting on a gold mine of nutrition here. Um, you can, I just boiled these for about an hour to soften them up. Uh, you can't eat them raw, you need to cook them. Um, but however, once they're cooked up, there it's like a squash, it's like a very pumpkin-y kabocha squash flavor in there, starchy in texture, very oily. I, mean, I even made an oil by just by boiling the fruits and skimming off the top of the water, very delicious. You can eat these just as is, just like that, you can just chew it right out of the shell, uh, scoop it out with a spoon, eat it with a little hot sauce and salt. I'm actually going to make some uh, patties out of it, smash up the pulp and make some chantadoodle burgers.